Hi. Uh, please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, Michael Ocampo, Ecosystem Alliance Manager at Astera Labs. Astera Labs is a premier AI connectivity company. We're based out of California, right here in Santa Clara. That's where our HQ is located. And we have offices all over the world. And here it says AI system design. What is special? What do you do here with the AI? Yeah, so this platform is actually OCP inspired. We call it our AAA platform. It's the Astera Labs Accelerated AI Platform. And so we have partnered up with a broad array of ecosystem partners to make this platform a reality. And it features all of our different connectivity solutions that cover the three major protocols such as PCIe, CXL, and Ethernet. So if we go from the front here, you can see that we have industry first pluggable. So what do we see here? So this is a pluggable multi-purpose module based off of the uh, SFF CA1037. So this is something that the OCP community has been looking at and coming together to define the right module to make it pluggable with DDR memory. Because the memory needs to be in full speed with the system, right? Yes. So how does it connect in full speed? Yeah, so this is a by 16 connector and has integrated power. So usually CAM is only 75 watts. With the integrated power that this connector supports, you can support up to 200 watts. So we have a special cable that this would connect to the backplane here into a standard MFLW motherboard. So this, this particular motherboard is actually from Supermicro. They're following the OCP DC MHS specification with the MCIO on the front. So this cable would actually need to be by 16 to two MCIO cable plus auxiliary power. From a serviceability perspective, it makes it very easy to maintain, deploy, and manage the DDR memory through our CXL memory controller. And you're talking about power uh, energy, right? But how about uh, data? How fast? Uh, you need to have a full speed access on the system. Yeah, so the support on here is DD DDR5 5600. So we support similar speeds on our controller, the DDR5 5600. You may want to ask about latency, right? So the the latency between one CPU to another CPU is about one NUMA hop. The latency from here to here would also be about a NUMA hop as well. What is a NUMA hop? A NUMA hop is um, it's just a measurement uh, for latency. So it's usually around like 200, 210 nanoseconds, somewhere around, around that range. So it's extremely low latency. Extremely low latency. And it's the same like putting the RAM directly next to the CPU or through the tray? Well, when you have the internal latency from the CPU to the local memory, it's something around like 110 or 100 nanosecond. Can you show on the, the is there a presentation about your technology here? Yeah, so here, this is actually a Explorer. So if I click on this, you can show the different perspectives. So here I have the front and then I have the back. So if I want to look at the front, you can see here, if I want to learn about the device I just showed you, you have CXL memory expansion module. And here you can see this is pluggable and it can support up to four terabytes of memory. So if we go back, and let's go to the next portion, number two, active storage backlink. This is a pretty big deal because you got by 16 at Gen 5. And that's if that's coming from the backside of the chassis or somewhere where the signal integrity may be um, degraded because of maybe a bend radius or some kind of uh, signal issue. Maybe, maybe the PCB material is not very high quality, or maybe temperature can actually degrade the link. Our read timer can actually be embedded into a backplane design such as this one. So you get a two MCIO cable going into here. That, that's a total of by 16. You can then bifurcate that by 16 signal into four different devices. So here, Samsung actually 
is being featured here with their E1S PM 9D3A. So this is a enterprise E1S drive that's rated for Gen 5 speeds. So this would be a perfect scenario to support four SSDs. Is it really useful to have everything available in the front like this? Yeah, so, so going back to CXL, again, one of the main reasons why we were inspired to, to build such a device is because it's in the front. So let's say you are in the data center and you want to maintain the DIMM or even upgrade it or maybe something failed. So you can plug out this device and then plug it back in and then put, and then you just slide it back in, boot the server up, you're ready to go. That took me 15 seconds. Or if I were really installing the DIMM, maybe that'd take me 20 to 30 seconds. Does it add a lot of cost to do it this way? Uh, you have to define cost, right? Like in terms of OPEX, actually, that's a big cost um, in terms of operating expense because let's say you have a service technician that goes out in the field. He has to then take out the entire server and put it onto a crash cart and then he's got to get access to the DIM. Like in this situation, it's not hot, plug hot pluggable. It's a cable from here to here. So he has to take that out and then put it onto the crash cart, install it, put it back in. That can take up maybe 30, 45 minutes. So would you rather take you know, a minute of service time or like 45 minutes? Uh, is there uh, many situations where the server administrator need to swap these things? Yeah, there's various situations, whether it's, you know, if a DIM failed, you know, these DIMs are, are you know, they may fail. Hopefully not, but in the event that it does fail, it's very easy to replace. SSDs are the same. They're designed for that situation. If, let's say, you wear out the storage device, right? You need to replace it. So some drives have different ratings. Some of them are one drive right to per day. It could be three drive rights per day. And that's based on the manufacturer and their specification. If for some reason, like MongoDB is very, very hard on the drives. In that case, I've seen drives in the field fail. You have to go replace it. And there, there's a management system that can detect failures, immediately point to which one needs to be swapped. Yeah, so what's nice about all the silicon that we're featuring here is they all can communicate to a BMC through Cosmos API platform. Um, in our booth at B13, you can actually see Grafana, which is a very standard open source dashboard that's collecting all the APIs to do monitoring. So you can get the health of the DIM or the health of the storage drive or health of your GPU. So one of the things that I'll show you back here is we just released a new PCIe switch called Scorpio. So one of the major use cases here is connecting uh, GPUs. So you have NVIDIA L40S GPUs, and so you can have peer-to-peer -peer communication without having to go back to the host. If the data traffic is going from the GPU to the host, you know, that's overhead, that's unnecessary, right? Most uh, inferencing or even training sequences are gonna require GPU-to-GPU -GPU communication. And then there's three chem slots, so you can actually have a request coming inbound through Ethernet. So this is a ConnectX7 card. So this could be operating at 400 gigabit or two 200 gigabit per port. And so that could be talking to two Gen 4 devices such as the one that you see here. So you would actually have a bandwidth match from a IO perspective, right? Is it uh, special that only your chip can support? What is the architecture of the, the CPU that you're doing there? So this is our purpose-built switch. So it's a platform-specific. Every platform is going to want something unique. You know, it's, it's designed to handle mixed traffic, whether it's GPU to GPU connectivity, Ethernet to GPU connectivity, or perhaps you wanted to do GPU to the storage connectivity, you can do that. In this situation, we are having chem slots, but 
our switch can be you know, different form factor where you have, let's say maybe two chem slots and then you, let's say you wanted to have two MCIO, that could be an option to communicate to a back plane like you saw in the front. That way you have the communication without having this, the host involved. So it's very flexible and very modular. So in this case, the other nice thing from an OEM or ODM perspective is you may not need a switch in every area. Of course, for us, we would like to put the switch everywhere, but in some cases, maybe you don't. For AMD, they have many more lanes than maybe a Intel host. So Intel, usually in the older generation, you would need a switch to kind of stand out and have more PCIe connections. But for AMD, you don't need such a switch to fan out to have like four to, you know, four GPUs is kind of the, the, the use case that I see mostly on these type of 19 inch rack mount servers. So, in, so for AMD, maybe you only need passive connections, but for Intel, you maybe you do, right? And so in that situation, this gives you the flexibility to put a switch in here where you need it.